Hi, welcome back to the Arcade Repair Tips video series. Today we're going to talk about installing a high score save kit on your arcade game. As you can see, we brought our friend Mr. Donkey Kong along today, and it says that his high score is 7,650. Now, believe it or not, Jonathan and I both can easily beat that high score. The problem is, as soon as we turn the game off, it's going to reset the high scores so that our scores are no longer on there. Well, thanks to our good friend Joe at HighScoreSaves.com, we have these kits available that he sent us one for us to try out today. And it's going to eliminate that and save our high score. So even if we turn the game off, the next time we come back or we score a good score, we can brag to our friends, take a picture of it, whatever, we'll show everybody what our score was. It will save it on there for us. It also has a couple of other really cool features. Now included in this kit, it comes first with a processor here that replaces the main processor on the Donkey Kong board. It also comes with a set of chips. We'll need to replace those two and we'll show you how to do that in a minute. So uh, we just need a couple of tools to do this with. We highly recommend that anytime you're dealing with electronics that you have something like an anti-static strap or glove, so we're going to use that today. Uh, we'll also need a chip puller. There are a couple different kinds. This is a very professional one. We'll give you a close-up of uh, soon and you'll see how this works. Also, I use a small screwdriver, but be very, very careful using a screwdriver. You don't want to bend any legs or anything like that, so watch that. Then uh, Joe also sent us a pen, and uh, I'm not sure why, but thank you, Joe, for the pen. Maybe it's for me to write down what I'm going to say next time, and we don't have to do so many takes. But thank you guys for watching, and we hope that you enjoy this video today. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is to remove the board from the game. Now, as every game, uh, when they roll off the assembly lines, all different, First thing we notice, this is actually different than a lot of Donkey Kong boards that we have come across. It doesn't have a, a type of connector up here, or kind of an all-in-one, but it does have a bunch of connectors. So the first thing that we did was we took some pictures with our uh, digital camera, our phone, and made sure that we know where these go. So taking them out is no big deal. Putting them back is a big deal. Another thing that I like to do is there's a couple of connectors nothing's going to. So a lot of times I will either put a piece of tape over them or I will put a use a paint pen and put an X on them. That helps me know when I go to plug stuff up that nothing goes in that spot. The reason why that's a big deal is because you think you'll remember but 30 minutes or so from now when we're putting it back in there, you'll forget or you'll see that empty spot and you'll try to think what goes here. If you know nothing goes there, that helps you make a decision. But we've already taken some pictures. We know where everything goes. So we're just going to go ahead and take the board out of there. Okay, we have removed all the connectors. Also, one thing you want to keep in mind is make sure they didn't actually solder or bypass a connector. Fortunately, this board hasn't been hacked up like we've seen plenty of other boards. So that all we got to do now is we took out a couple screws. I put my anti-static gloves on so we don't want to hit or spark into that. And we're actually just going to take this. Oh, got one more connector on the back here. And we're just going to go put this on the bench. Well, now that we brought our board over to the test bench, we can uh, remove these chips. One thing that we would like to say about the high score save kit from Joe is that they're clearly labeled. It said that this is 3N3P7CDENF, which are all right here on the board, clearly labeled on this one, which makes it easier. This is a two-sided board. So uh, it was nice to know exactly where these chips went and that saves us a lot of time. So basically the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our chip puller and we are going to take off these chips. Now we're going to be very careful taking these chips off just in case we need them again one day. Also, um, we can do these one at a time 
or because these go in order, C, D, E, F, N, and P, I don't mind taking them all off now because I know we're also going to watch the orientation of which way that they go. So as I take these off, and all I'm doing is taking, I'll give you guys a close-up of this one, the hooks here, a little bend right there, those hook up underneath the chip. This is a um, kind of a, a really good chip puller, and it allows me to squeeze like that, and I'm actually going to hook up under between the chip and the socket itself, wiggle them a little bit, and pull that chip out. There's what the chip looks like, and there's the legs on the back, and it went this direction. Now, I hope you guys can see this in the video. There is a notch at the top. You know what, this pin may just come in handy now. Right there on the top of this is a notch, and that notch right there tells me which direction the new chip is gonna go, and everybody's pointing this way. That's not always the case. Some could be pointing a different direction, so keep that in mind when you're doing this. So we're just going to set that chip over there. That's 7C. 7D. E. rocking this back and forth just a little bit. Now if you don't have a chip puller, you can use a screwdriver and pry under one end, pry on the other end. Problem with using a screwdriver, they work in a pinch, but they do tend to bend the legs a lot more. As you can see as using that chip puller, most of the legs and stuff come out really straight and that helps putting in another one. Okay, so we removed all the chips, and uh, we're going to keep those, and uh, Joe sent us, his, the new chips came in these, we put them in the same holder, uh, we can keep those, you may need them later, or you could sell those, uh, somebody may need this to fix their Donkey Kong, so we'll keep those. Um, now we're going to replace the new chips, and uh, thanks to Joe, he labeled all of these really nicely. This is 7C. Uh, remember a couple things that I mentioned, the notch right here uh, at the top needs to go um, upwards facing that way. Uh, most of the time on the board it'll be labeled too but this is not so this would have been another good time for some of you new guys to have taken a picture to see which way that it goes uh, but this was labeled and we remember and we we're shooting a video so if we forget we can go back and watch the video but so can you guys. So what we want to do before we install is to just visually inspect the chip, make sure that there's no leg that's kind of bent out or anything. And this one looks pretty good. I also like to pinch it just a little all the way down to make the legs kind of come in. If you guys can see me here, um, the legs kind of tend to spread, especially if you pull the chip. So what you want to do is squeeze them just a little bit so that they're straight like that. And this one looks pretty good. Now we're just going to line up the holes. And once that's lined up, we're just going to give it a, that's, this actually is spread more than I thought. So I'm gonna do a little more pinching here. You can kinda, it's kind of a feel. You can feel when it's lining up and you're hitting those holes just right. And then we're just going to push it in. Still a little bit tight. So I'm going to, if you try to force it too much, you'll get um, legs are so easy to bend. We don't want to bend them. So I'm, again, I'm just pinching this just a hair just to straighten those pins out. Taking our time, no rush here on this either. You, you paid some good money for this stuff and we, you don't want to mess it up. 
Okay, once it gets lined up, then we're actually just going to press in. You heard it snap. And also I can visually inspect now and make sure that every single pin went in. I have pushed these in before and you have one that's kind of uh, legged out or something br or spread out on you. You have to re-pull it, take a little pair of needle nose or your fingers and just pull, put that back in. So that chip is done. We'll go on and do the rest of them now. Okay. Now that we've installed all of the chips here, the first thing we're doing is double check our work. Make sure that the notches are all going in the, the direction that they're supposed to, which was up in our, our case here. They're all the same way. Also that I didn't get something mixed up, real easy to do. We got C, D, E, F, N, 3N and 3P here. So Joe did a good job of labeling those for us. And that makes it easy so that we know that everything there is right. Also, I'm kind of pushing in, making sure I don't have any legs or anything. Everything looks really good on this end. So now what we're going to do is, uh, well, we took the, I should mention too that we took the chips off and we saved them in the same holder that Joe sent us. Uh, these could come in handy if something were to fail. Later, you might want to keep these or you could sell these or send them back to Joe. He could write over them, whatever, but those would be good to keep. Now, as we flip the board over, we're looking for the processor. Now, on this board set, which is a two board set, uh, the processor is at 7C. One thing that we did notice about the high score set is there's two places it could go and it's not labeled. So we needed to, we looked that up easily on the internet though and saw that the processor is here. On a, a different Donkey Kong board set, the, it's at 5C. So you may need to check whatever your board set is and um, that, that's probably why he didn't label it because there's different boards and stuff. So make sure that you're putting this in the right position because it could go here. But we looked it up and it's 7C, 7 over here and C up here draws us to that area. And we're going to replace this chip right here right now. This is our processor chip. So again, use the same chip puller. We just extend it out a little bit because it's a lot longer. Wiggling that back and forth just a hair making sure that we take good care of that guy. We want to keep him. He's also, since especially this was a working board set, we want to really take good care of that stuff. Same way we're going to install this that we installed the other guys, except for these pins don't tend to bend as much. They're a little bit thicker and uh, they're, they, they're a little bit more rigid. So we don't exactly have to, I mean, we don't have to, it, there could get bent, but I'm not going to squeeze them like I did the other guys. But we do need to make sure the notch still has a notch. It's going the same way the old notch is. And that was this direction this time, not that way. So you can't always say they're going to be going one direction. We're showing right here, right now, this side of the board, they're actually going the other way. So I'm going to get down here a little closer. And you've got to line this up. with the holes here. Once we get those lined up, we're just going to press it in. All right. And really that's all that's involved in, we took the one processor out. Now you've noticed this is just a chip. I mean, it's just one thing. This is kind of a big block, kind of like you see on a Miss Pac-Man or something, it's a little bit bigger. But that's okay, as long as it goes over there and that it's standing up like that, this is what it should look like when it's done. Well, now that we've got everything installed, we're, we've got the chips on one side and the processor on the other side, we're going to take the board back and install it in our game. Okay, now that we have got the chips, everything on the board, we're just going to gently install it back inside the game and hook all of our wiring back up. Okay, now the moment of truth. We've got it installed. Let's turn the game on and see what happens. It's 
First thing I see it says to push start to enter setup. So we're going to enter the setup. Okay, so here we are with the setup menu and you might notice it's pretty long and it's got a lot of stuff. So let's go through some of the important lines. The first one is the cabinet type, which is, this is an upright. The next is the number of lives. So you could change that by hitting the jump button to four, five, six, or goes back to three. So between three and six, we like to keep our games pretty original, especially if we're going for scores and stuff. Uh, you can change the bonus jump, jump man, uh, the coinage, um, the, the country of origin stuff, that typical type stuff. Here's what's neat. We put it on free play already. Um, if you'll notice, it says game here. This is something very unique about this high score save kit. If we hit the jump button, we can go with Donkey Kong Original, Pauline Edition, or Donkey Kong 2 or DK2. So really now instead of having a single, we have like a triple Donkey Kong already. So we're going to leave it on Donkey Kong Original. And then there's some hacks and things in here you can change. We put the save scores on and then you go down here where it says online. Now we hooked up an internet or uh, ethernet cable to our um, board and we've already hooked it up so that we can get online. We changed that to on. If you're not don't want to be online you need to put that on off to get out of this menu board or it will just keep looking for online so you need to make sure that's off if you don't want to hook up to the internet now joe at highscoresave.com really did some cool things with this he sent us you'll see this pk and sk down there those are specific codes that he emailed us and we entered those in now we can go to his website which is, I'm going to look at it here, it is ArcadeHighScores.com. High, high ArcadeHighScores.com. Uh, yes, it's an S on the end. So ArcadeHighScores.com. And you can bring that up and it'll uh, display your scores. So you guys out there, we could all compete against each other if you have this kit. Then we want to go down here and just hit Save. We do that by hitting Down and then Jump. And then that will get us up into game mode. Okay, so we need to press the start button to get back into the game. And it'll take just a few seconds and it'll boot up. There's our game booting up. Now you might notice the high scores, which we played a, a couple games for testing purposes only. We want to know this is not our A games. We just wanted you guys to see. You saw them on there that the uh, old high scores have been erased. And we've turned the game off several times now, so that has been saved. Now, eventually that will load on to the online, and we can go on there, and you guys can see our scores on our own personal page on his website. Okay, now that we've got everything installed and set up, let's go ahead and give this product a review. There are several things we really like about this product. One is the easy to use interface when you go into the setup mode because there's a couple of really cool things that it allows you to do. One, it allows you to set up on free play, which is really nice for your home game room. The other one is that it allows you to play different versions of Donkey Kong. How cool is that? So we really like that fact. Also, that it not only saves your high scores here, you can also upload and save them on the internet. Let's take just a second to look at our internet page. That's pretty cool, huh? See, with your kit that you buy, Joe sets up that page for you, gives you some options where you can change your background and do a few things like that. So it's real simple to do, and he'll set that up for you, and then you can compete with your friends. Now, we must discuss a couple things that we didn't quite like, or, or we weren't as excited about, I should say, with the high score safe kit. The one is that it wasn't wireless. The fact that we had to run a cable and everything, would like to see maybe a wire, wireless version of this come out in the future. Also, that this really wasn't a, an easy kit to install. Now, if you're a very beginner at this, you, you gotta watch things like static and which way to uh, pull in and put putting in chips. It's not really a, the easiest thing to do if you're a real newbie at the thing. But if you're an intermediate level or an expert level, 
you'll have no problem doing this, especially after watching this video. So once again, we want to thank Joe at HighScoreSaves.com. High That's Joe at HighScoreSaves.com. And you want to order his High Score Saves Kit. Overall, we think it's a great product and really a must-have if you want to save the high scores on your classic arcade games. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Arcade Repair Tips. We're, once again, we want to thank Joe at HighScoreSaves.com. HighScoreSaves.com. We'd also like to thank our community manager, Louie, for helping set this up and get us connected with Joe. So if you guys have any questions, of course, you know how to get in contact with us. You can go to our webpage, ArcadeRepairTips.com. Send us an email, and we'll be glad to help you from there. Just remember now that when you fix a game, you play the game, and now you can save the game.